this LTSPICE tutorial. In the previous video, we have seen CA simplifier with current source load, diode connected load, etc. However, our main aim was to have an almost ideal current source as the load. Now, it's always possible that in an integrated circuit, we can have golden reference current that's copied throughout the chip, which increases its efficiency and also cost. These kind of circuits are also known as current mirrors. So in this video, let's have a look at our CS stage with current mirror load. So here we are in LD Spice with CS stage with current mirror load. This is the MOSFET which gives us the transconductance. So what I'll do is I'll keep the aspect ratios of this MOSFET and this MOSFET same. This PMOS and this PMOS have the same aspect ratio. Let's check that if it is true. This is 10 micro, 10 micro and this is also 10 micro and 10 micro. So what I am going to achieve is 20 micro current will be copied to the circuit. But is it going to happen directly? No, it's not going to happen directly because this MOSFET, the NMOS has to draw that current. So how are we going to achieve that? We need to calculate the W by L ratio and also the VG voltage which we have to give to this MOSFET so that it can draw the 20 micro ampere current and this can achieve the required gain but what we will do is we will assume again we will design this circuit so that it gives us a gain of 250 let's have a look at the calculation the gain of the amplifier with current mirror load is almost same as the gain of the amplifier with current source load so let's design an amplifier for a gain of 250 volt per volt let the golden reference current, as I have shown in the LTS pass schematic, let it be 20 microamperes. So the drain current of the transconductance MOSFET is going to be I reference, which is this current, times the aspect ratios of the MOS second and third MOSFET. Since we have same aspect ratios for both the PMOS, so we have our drain current as 20 microamperes. So with that, we can calculate RO1 and RO2 by using this lambda n is equal to 0 0.1 and 0 0.05 which I am going to give uh, in LT spice. So with those values I can calculate RO1 as 500k and uh, RO2 as 1 mega ohms. And I have also specified these parameters and given these values in LT spice. So with these values if I substitute in uh, the gain which is nothing but uh, GMN times RO1 parallel RO2, uh, the RO1 parallel RO2 will become 333.33k and uh, GMN can be written as square root of 2ID mu and Cox WL. I have already told in the previous videos that the GM has three different equations. Since we know ID, we can use this equation. So square root of 2ID mu and Cox WL and this value. Uh, the only unknown parameter here is W by L. We can calculate W by L using these parameters so with that the value of WL becomes almost 73 remember that use the most accurate values to calculate VGS because if VGS varies by a small value you are going to have a different gain or your MOSFET may reach the triode region so with these values W by L as 73 or some 73.0 or whatever with those fraction values you can calculate the VGS using this equation this equation basically comes from the ID equation the current equation and saturation so VGS is going to be 0 0.45234 volts this value also should be very very accurate even with two decimal places you are not going to get accurate value uh, accurate gain you have to have at least four to five decimal places so with this value let's see in lt spice if we are going to get the 250 gain let's first check the dc operating points so i'm going to comment this transient response command Okay, with the semicolon, uh, I'm gonna run this. This dot op is going to give me the DC operating points when I run this. So I have my ID as uh, two into the power of minus five, which is 20 micro. So let's close this and run the transient response and see if um, uh, we are going to get the gain what we expected. So I'm gonna remove this semicolon comment and uh, I'm gonna run this. I'm going to click the output and also the input. You can see that if our input is 
2 millivolt peak to peak we are going to get a 250 volt per volt gain i'm going to add a new plot plane and move this input voltage over this new plot plane and i'm going to subtract the value which we have given which is minus 0 0.45234 and we have a variation from zero we have two millivolt peak to peak input signal and we have uh, i guess it is 250 250 plus 250 and minus 250 which gives us 500 let's see the output pick to pick it's almost it's more than 500 537 so we have designed uh, an amplifier for 250 volt per volt gain and we have got a little more because uh, there is a small variation because of a value a value is not accurate so it's giving us more gain so with this topology we have seen almost all the loads that can be given to a cs amplifier so thanks for watching i'll see you in the next video bye bye